ट्रबल शूटिंग ट्रबल शूटिंग इज डिटर्मिनिंग द सोर्स एंड कॉज ऑफ द प्रॉब्लम दिस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट इन इक्विपमेंट मैनेजमेंट प्रॉब्लम विद इक्विपमेंट मे प्रेजेंट इन मेनी वेज द ऑपरेटर मे नोटिस सटल चेंजेस सच एज ड्रिफ्ट इन क्वालिटी कंट्रोल और कैलिब्रेटर वैल्यूज और ऑब्वियस फ्लॉज इन द इक्विपमेंट फंक्शन समटाइम्स द इक्विपमेंट फेल्स टू ऑपरेट ऑल टूगेदर it is important to teach operators to troubleshoot equipment problems in order to quickly get the equipment functioning and resume testing as rapidly as possible when an operator observes instrument drift it is important to repeat the preventive maintenance procedures as a first step to resolve the problems if this does not work proceed with troubleshooting processes Manufacturers frequently provide a flow chart that can help determine the source of problems. Some of the questions that need answers for problem resolution are listed here. Look at the fishbone diagram illustrated on the screen as we talk about each of the components. Generally, the problems come from the samples, the operators, the laboratory environment, reagents or the equipment itself. So here, we are not just talking about the equipment equipment is just part of the problem but whenever you are troubleshooting you would consider all of these comprehensively is the problem related to a poor sample consider problems in collection storage or factors such as turbidity and clotting of samples is there a problem with the reagents consider storage expiry and updating of the new lot numbers of reagents with calibration all those things should be looked at as part of the troubleshooting is there a problem with control material itself does the test need recalibration is there a problem with the water or electrical supply environmental problems such as temperature outage is there a problem with the equipment coming to the equipment there are specific checklists that you may need to use which will be part of most equipment operators manuals Make sure that you read and understand the checklist that is given by your manufacturer. One more thing that you might want to look at is is it a new operator that is somebody not trained. A sample troubleshooting table is shown here. This is from the WHO manual for equipment management. Make one change at a time based on symptoms. If equipment is a problem Review the manufacturer's instructions to verify that all the procedures are being followed correctly. The manufacturer must provide a single point of contact or helpline for troubleshooting as effectively and in as timely a manner as possible. Flags. It must be clarified by the manufacturer or supplier during training as to what instrument flags and alerts should the lab personnel watch out for. Also it should be clearly known to what extent or step the equipment troubleshooting can be done by the lab personnel and which snags are to be addressed by manufacturer only never attempt unauthorized maintenance or troubleshooting steps equipment breakdown repair and downtime when in house efforts fail call the technical support for repair however attempt to find a way to continue testing until the equipment can be repaired Some ways to achieve this are as follows. Arrange to have access to backup instruments. Ask the manufacturer to provide a replacement instrument during repairs. Send the samples to a nearby quality assured laboratory for testing. Be sure to notify the relevant stakeholders that there are problems and that there will probably be delays in completing the testing. Do not use faulty equipment. Seek help from the manufacturer or other technical expert. place a note on the equipment with the date so all staff are aware that it is not in use it is very important to log the reason for the breakdown the time taken for the repair and if the problem is recurrent this will enable a better root cause analysis and easier solutions recording the promptness and expertise of service availability of spare parts etc will enable assessing the support of the manufacturer for future associations Breakdown policies should be available for all equipment so as to enable the staff to understand the lab's policies in the event of a breakdown. It is important to maintain a breakdown history log with details of when the breakdown occurred, what was the nature of the problem, what corrective actions were taken, etc.
A sample breakdown history log is shown here. See the content of it, the captured information here. Name of the equipment, name of the company or supplier, the asset code, the location, frequency, date of installation. These are all identification of the equipment. And then you have the details of the breakdown, the date of the complaint, the date of the completion of the repair, time taken for the preventive maintenance, bringing it back to life. Downtime, how much of downtime was there? The fault, is it a recurrence? What is the action taken? So, there are multiple things that you need to put into your breakdown logs, especially with regard to the downtime and about recurrence. If it is a recurrent problem, that means you have to go to the bottom of it. Equipment downtime monitoring is key to good quality management. The downtime of all major analytical equipment may be captured and depicted as a dashboard for quality improvement. Another concept in equipment management is change control. Whenever the location of equipment is shifted intentionally or unintentionally, attention should be paid to the fact that the settings can be altered. In the case of major shifts in location, the entire process of verification, IQ, OQ and PQ should be repeated and documented. Such protocols should be built into the equipment management programs and SOPs of the lab.